200 people participated in a silent march from a Jewish synagogue in Portland to Pioneer Square. Organizers say the march was to stand in solidarity with those who've been silenced by bigotry and racism. After the march, the group listened to a liturgy based on Martin Luther King's vision of community. Then it was on Saturday we saw more than three million people and counting take to the streets in the planned women's march. It's one of the largest organized protests in U.S. history. While we saw demonstrators all across the country, we also saw them right here in Portland. Officials estimate between 75,000 and 100,000 people took part in the Portland Women's March. And Jennifer, as you mentioned, Portland police say Saturday's Women's March was easily one of the biggest ones on record for the entire state of Oregon. For our state, yes, city leaders, though, were bracing themselves for a weekend of chaos, but what they got was actually something quite different. Our Eileen Park is digging deeper into that. Eileen? Jeff and Jennifer, who could forget the violent November protests after the election? Well, certainly city leaders and Portland police couldn't. That's why they took the lessons they learned from November and applied them to this past weekend. When the tens of thousands marched in the Women's March Saturday, police tell me many reached out worried about their safety. Nobody should be afraid to come to an event in downtown Portland. But they were, especially after November's violent protests in downtown Portland. Oh. And Friday's protests involving flashbangs and riot gear. <laughs> Portland police tells me they received many calls about Saturday's march, so they were extra cautious about revealing riot gear and also took a more aggressive approach when blocking traffic. We look at the big picture of the whole weekend and we look at it as a success. The goals were to allow First Amendment free speech events to happen safely, but to prevent people from getting on freeways, blocking bridges, uh, affecting transit and uh, mass reports of vandalism. TriMet was also expecting more disruptions for Friday and Saturday. Initially on Friday, they were not going to run service to downtown Portland. Then they changed their minds, saying they would only halt service if there was a safety concern. It was a crazy day. Saturday's Women's March brought in tens of thousands, by some estimates nearly 100,000. Friday's protest, much less than that. Portland police estimates around 5,000. The two events could not have been more different. Five people were arrested on Friday, but on Saturday, police say there were zero incidents. The city was aware of what we were doing. They knew what to plan for. Now looking ahead, the group Direct Action Alliance is threatening the mayor to shut the city down if he does not fire the chief of Portland police. The group says Portland police did not act well during Friday's protests. We're waiting to hear back from the mayor's office. We'll let you know what they say. We're live in downtown Portland. I'm Eileen Park. Jeff and Jennifer, I'll send it back to you. All right, Eileen, thank you. Coming up at 530, we're going to have more on the hearings happening now for President Trump's 